Today we're looking at conditional formatting in Google Sheets. This is a quick way to highlight cells that meet certain criteria or conditions. And so let's go ahead and start. And so one way you can do this is if you already know a column that you want to apply a rule to, you can go ahead and select it. Then under the format menu, select conditional formatting. Then we'll have this sidebar where we can put together our conditional formatting rules. And you can have multiple rules for the same sheet. And so to start with, you can see at the top, we have single color or color scale. And so color scale is a quick way to highlight numbers on a sliding scale. So for example, if we select this one, you can see the lower numbers are highlighted in red and the higher ones are highlighted in green with the midpoint being white. So you can select your custom values here and custom colors to fit your particular criteria. And so these min values could be negative. Your midpoint could be zero, for example. And so you can set this however you need to, or you can pick one of the custom ones that they have here. So it's a quick way to highlight particular values. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to single color and look at our different formatting rules here. And so first we have some text ones. And so this one is, is empty, is not empty. And this will actually apply to any cell, not just text. And then we see text contains, does not contain, starts with, ends with, and is exactly. So let's go ahead, move over to our C column. We'll just change our apply to range. And then maybe we'll just put text starts with iPhone. And so now you can see our iPhone ones are highlighted. Or maybe we could do text contains and we could say air. And now you can see our Air Jordans are highlighted as well as our Nike Air. Another thing we can look at is dates. When we get down to here, and so we can see date is, it could be today, tomorrow, yesterday, a couple criteria for past week, past month, past year. Or we could do exact date and we can type in, let's say 110, 22. Change our apply to your range to A. And you can see our 110 is now highlighted. So you can also do this if date is after. You can see all the dates after. We do days before and see all the dates before. And then here we see some numeric ones. And so these are greater than or equals to. This still applies with dates. Or we could bring this over to E. And then we can use some number of maybe like 500. We can see all the ones greater than 500. We could do greater than equals to, uh, let's say 345. And you can see that's different than greater than. Greater than excludes that. Greater than equals to includes. So we could do less than. We could do less than or equal to. We could do is equal to. Is not equal to. And then we could do is between. And so we could do here, if we could do 500 and 1,000. And we can see those ones that apply there. And finally, is not between shows the ones outside of that value. All right, so finally, we have this custom formula. And so first off, let's just jump back over to B. And let's just check out some things we can do here. So for example, we could do equals to, and we could select Phoebe. And one thing to keep in mind, is when you use this one, you want to have that starting cell. And so what it's doing here is if we do just equals Phoebe, it's not showing anything showing up. It's because we actually have to do when it's custom formula, we're actually creating a formula that we want to use to apply. So for example, we can go here and we could do equals B3 equals DB. And we can see the answer is false. If we drag this down, we can see true, false, false, true, false, true. And so this is a quick way to validate your custom formulas is to check to see if it actually works on the sheet. And so if we select here, we can see every one that's highlighted is one that shows up as true over here on the right. 
Now, what happens if we want to highlight our entire data set? So let's go ahead and do the supply to range. We'll expand it. But something's funky going on here. It's not quite showing up quite right. And so one thing to keep in mind is if you want to highlight the entire range and not just a particular column, you want to put this dollar sign in front of the column reference in your custom formula. And what this does is it tells Google Sheets to just look in this column and not starting over here. So when we don't have this dollar sign, it's looking everywhere, and that's why it's returning some funky results. So if we add this dollar sign, it checks only B column for our criteria right here, and then returns the appropriate results. And so we can go ahead and go through here, and we could add some different criteria. Um, we could say Phoebe. Um, we could add another one. And another thing to note is you want to start with the same number. Sometimes you might have this starting in A2, and if this is B3, do Rachel. And if these don't match, you can see our highlighting is in the wrong cell. So let's make sure those numbers match. And then if you need to lock your column so you can highlight the whole row, and that's what you need to do there. So we could pick something for Rachel and we could continue on, so forth. Now, let's say we want to look at the week that the sales were made, and group by the week. So let's go ahead and add a column here, and we'll call this highlight, and then we're gonna come up with this formula. Go ahead and clean this one out. We wanna group our highlighting by week. Let's go ahead and get rid of these two real quick. And so we want to look at week one and week two and group it therefore. So let's add another column and let's do week number and we'll do week and add those down through. So what we want to do is group and highlight based on this week grouping. All right, and so what we'll do is we'll add a true at the top, and then we'll add our formula to compare and to be able to group our weeks. So we'll do if B4 equals B3, so that's checking to see if our week number is the same as the last week. And then if so, we'll do H3, otherwise we'll do not H3. And then we'll go ahead and drag this down. And now what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and open this up, A3 to H, and then we'll just check our value in H. And so if you look, every time the week changes, the highlighting changes. All right, so that I hope that opens the floodgates for how you can use conditional formatting in your own project. This custom formula is very adaptable and has plenty of use cases. We don't have the time to jump into all of them today, but hopefully we helped you to see and understand how you can use this in your own project. That's it for today. Hope you tune back again soon for more tutorials.